ZNS Total Sports is brought to you by Fourth Terrace Diagnostic Center. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Amajal Knowles with your Sunday Sports. Team Bahamas coming up on the losing end in a number of sports at the CAC Games in Barranquilla, Colombia. Our Kelsey Johnson is there and filed this report. <laughs> After the final bell toll, it came down to the judges. And when Carl Heald walked to the middle of the ring, holding on to the referee's hand, it was his opponent's, Byron Palaka's hand, that was raised and he will be moving on to the semi-final round. For Heald, he thought his fury of blows in the second round secured the win. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what I got to do to win because the crowd see I win. Everyone see I win. So, But like they say, if I see I get the bad end of the stick because they get two Puerto Ricans with Lewis today and hold a tree. So they was thinking let tree go down in one night. So just got to go back to the draw board. The mixed doubles team of Kerry Cartwright and Philip Major Jr. were also served a blow. Philip Major and Kevin Major also stepped on the court where they were defeated in the quarterfinal round. The team of Simone Pratt and Daniel Thompson are into the semifinal round of play in women's doubles. We were up for one and went to four all. We managed to hold it and maintain one set six four. Well, when we got into the second set, we decided to switch things up a bit, um, change sides and see how that would work out for us. And we were able to be more aggressive on the sides that we felt more comfortable on. It being like one of our first times playing doubles since a very long time. So we we're just trying to adjust and we were able to make that adjustment in the second set. Another no-hitter game for the men's softball team. They struggled to put a run on the board while giving up four to Venezuela. Well, to be honest, I really just feel like we need to, you know, adjust to the pitching and, and be a little more patient. We swing it at more rises than anything right now. We just need to wait on our pitch, and I think we'll hit the ball a lot better. We're playing defense. The defense is on point right now, but we really have to hit. Uh, I think we can, we, can, we can play with any of these teams right now, so that's not a problem with them at all. Reporting from Barranquilla, Colombia, where the 23rd edition of the Central American and Caribbean Games is taking place, I am Kelsey Johnson, ZNS Total Sports. The Bahamas Professional Golf Tour recently wrapped up its most recent installment of its signature series, Classic. The event's PR person, Kira Horton, lets us know what's next. The tournament culminates in December the 28th through the 31st with the three-day tour, and that will mark the end of the 2018 series in tournament play and then we go on to 2019 and we look forward to exploring the courses in the family islands not just the local courses here and there is also this big prize that is up for grabs this year we focus on the local courses in nassau so the first two classics we've had the opportunity to use the the course at bahama and we love the, the course there as well. And this is the first time that we are moving along from Bama and we're at Ocean Club. We'll be here again next month and next month marks the whole in one tournament. So everybody's really excited about that. And we want everybody to get involved. Do sign up, do register and you want to get involved to get that whole in one million dollar prize. And be prepared to be whisked away, literally. We caught up with veteran WISP player George Anthony Sherman at a recent tournament who gave our news team a brief history lesson on the game's development in the country. We used to play um, um, 12 weeks in the summer from, from, June, from June to end of August. And uh, at, at, the, at the highest of St. Francis, we had 31 tables. 31 tables. When I closed down in 2010, we, ended, we had 17 tables because most of the people that died. Okay? And St. So, Francis was the first WISP tournament. They started in 19, 1947. My old man used to run it from the Holy Name Society. I took over in 65 and, um, and stopped in 2010. And have you ever wondered what it's like transitioning from being a player in the NBA to an official? Well, if you have, our news team recently spoke with NBA official Haywood Workman on just how he made the adjustment. Difficult. Um, I've been a referee now for 10 years. Um, it was really difficult in the beginning because 
some of the things that as a player that you would let go, you can't do that as a referee. So and I have to be consistent with that. So that's that's the difficult part of going from playing to being a referee. Workman also put into rest an age-old notion that star players get preferential treatment. It doesn't change. Um, but I would say this. The guys that normally are the superstars, those are the guys who have the ball all the time. So those are the guys who usually get all the calls. But, you know, um, we, sh we show no favoritism. Um, commentators may think so, but the referees don't. Workman played 12 seasons in the league and averaged just under six points. He's been working as a referee since 2004. And that will do it for Sports Sunday. Stay tuned. Tonight's weather forecast is up next.